Hey there, fellows. Here's what we're up to in this one. This here is a regular old clutch for a car. And I've got me this lovely thing. Which I decided to try and find after all of the requests we got to make a clutch that operates while contained in oil. Like you'd find in that there motorcycle. Turns out these types of clutches are virtually indestructible. Alright, so we got the packs, the plates. Let's make us a wet type clutch for an automobile. Let's do this. So our lathe guy machined us two rings. The one that's bigger is meant to go on the housing. We'll drill some holes, tap some thread. And uh, here we have the hub. Clutch pack is in there, there's no retainer. And uh, right now the assembly is free to rotate. So this connects to the flywheel. Yes, this connects to the flywheel, and this is essentially the pressure plate. So when the car isn't moving, this smaller one falls right into there. And it'll push down on the clutch packs. How do we make that work? Well, we'll weld on a sort of drum, well, a pipe with a cover, and a hole in the middle. That's for the outer ring, and we'll weld a second drum to the inner ring as well. It'll be slightly smaller, one will slip into the other. So this snout right here, it's half empty. We're going to make an incision and stick a pipe. Uh, yeah, I get the idea. You're gonna fit some springs. We'll fit the springs. And uh, theoretically speaking, they should evenly distribute the pressure. Pull the centerpiece and it should move evenly. But you reckon it's going to bind? Here we have the inner drum. Our lathe operator precisely divided it into eight sections. And here we're going to be running some guides. Uh, don't know if we'll use bolts or studs for the purpose. But about half of the height of the springs, uh, you got one, two, three, four. They'll be placed across from each other and placed this like so. Cover it up like this. Our lathe operator has machined us this cylindrical bit right here. Place it like so, weld all the way around. Put it back onto the lathe. The operator will machine an orifice. Then we'll fit the clutch disc section with the splines. This piece right here, which we are going to weld on. Without any of this jazz, of course. And that's what we'll stick the gearbox input shaft into. And this is the clutch pack I've got. We're going to go ahead and place it in here, everything is looking good. And so we've laid the pack. And for us to get proper engagement, the clutch pack has to be pressed down on and hard. And that is what we've made this bit for. Here we have welded on some teeth, as you can see. That is to make it rotate together with the main housing. With the big drum. The key thing here is that for this to press on the clutch pack, something has to be pressing onto it. 
Here I've got me some tiny springs, and they actually have got quite a bit of tension to them. Yeah, these can exert a lot of force. We are going to go ahead and install them like so, and top it all off with this here cover. When this cover comes down, it'll uh, compress the springs and exert a lot of pressure onto the clutch pack. Now, we actually overcomplicated this at first. You see, we wanted to make a separate casing for this whole thing, which we would have poured the oil into. But then we realized that we won't need it. Because, well... If we weld up all of the little holes on this housing, we can just fill it with the transmission fluid. And so now we just need to make that... the bit that's going to pull the pressure plate away to allow the clutch packs to release. That's going to disengage the clutch. So that is the main task that we have to address right now. And also we have to seal this whole thing to prevent any oil from escaping. And from there, of course, we fit all of this to a car. Okay, well, let's carry on and see where this goes. We're having to take this thing apart and reassemble it many, many times. The reason being we are trying to get everything to fit and match. We're adding new stuff. Sometimes the welding warps something. After assembly, we realize that something isn't fitting, so more machining, welding, cutting. And it is just a never-ending cycle. Otherwise, it's not all that complicated. As long as you have a picture in your head of how all of this comes together, how and what to weld and cut, it's just one big complex thing. Check out what we got here. Here we have the clutch assembly attached to the gearbox. We got everything assembled and it looks about as we'd imagined. This side will be connected to the flywheel as you've probably guessed. Here we have the clutch itself and here we have the release mechanism. And that's actually an interesting one. We've cooked up this here fork that we pieced together out of metal strips. It has turned out fairly light and it is gonna... I won't be able to move it with my hand, but its purpose is to release the clutch, disengage the clutch packs to allow the transmission to change gear. Okay, well, let's fit this gearbox to a car and uh, get to the testing phase. So this is an interesting predicament. It doesn't seem like we used a ton of those tiny springs, but compressing even just one of them requires quite a bit of force. We're running a total of eight of them, and here's the situation. We've welded up the fork, that's all good. We're using the stock Lotta Master and Slave clutch cylinders, and when you press the clutch pedal, uh, press it. So here is what's going on. The cylinders are doing just fine, the fork is getting bent, and it is not quite separating the clutch as much as we'd like. The forces are so intense that even the transmission bell housing is getting deformed. Where we got the slave cylinder mounted, that area is bending badly. This isn't something we often deal with, but this is what we're currently dealing with. 
So yeah, some reinforcement needs to be done. And we might want to remove some of the springs. Okay, so here is where we're at with this. While this was still on the bench, it seemed as if it were easy to actuate. But as soon as we got it in the car, that's when the trouble began. Either the clutch isn't fully releasing, or the fork gets bent. All we got is six tiny springs, but they exert a lot of force, so yeah. We were bending the fork, breaking the bell housing, there were a lot of issues. But we were able to get everything to work, so we should be good now. So let's bring the car down and proceed to do some testing in the field. We'd better drive around and see how this works, so let's get to it. And now we get to the interesting part, which would be the driving portion. The engine is running, that's all good. I do feel some vibration. Must be because of the welds. Everything is well balanced after machining work, and not so much after you've done some welding. Okay, well, let's see. I can see the fork moving around. That is quite a bit of motion. We might have overdone it. The idea was to widen the range, but that seems to have been unnecessary. But everything appears to work, that's uh, nice. And now we get to the interesting part, which is attempting to drive. Now I just need to work out how to modulate the pedal properly. Yeah, all it needs is a slight push. Ooh, it works! Awesome! What do you know? But you only need to give it a slight push. Because the packs only separate ever so slightly, and so that is the most effective way to go about it. All it takes is for me to press down on the pedal by like 15 to 20 millimeters, and the clutch mechanism starts to work. The tiniest input and, uh, yeah, I can hear some crunching noises. But then it's not like we properly designed this or anything. We're just using parts that we had, and so that's what might be causing them. In any case, let me just... Did I press it in too much? Right, need to be slightly more abrupt. Anyways, so you would know this if you've ever taken a motorcycle apart. You've got multiple discs, and with the oil being viscous, it's going to transfer a lot of that rotational motion. And uh, that would be the cause of the noises that I'm hearing. Also, you got the synchros. Oh wow, nothing spinning even in third. That's nice. Even though they're of modest diameter, they can still take the torque. And transfer it from the engine to the gearbox. But crucially, this works, and quite well, I'd say. It would benefit from a bit of work to get everything dialed in precisely, of course. But I think it's all doable. Obviously, we are at the trial stage right now. But it's nice to know that the system works. Now I'd like to try revving up the engine, wide open throttle, and dumping the clutch. What will happen, and will we see wheel spin? The wheels did not begin to spin. 
It set off as if I smoothly released the clutch. That's an interesting effect. I can just let it go, the packs stick together, and off we go. With this sort of clutch, uh, say you're not very experienced with a manual and you don't know how to work the pedals properly, but here you don't have to. Press it into gear and off you go. This thing just smoothly sets off. And the clutch packs, it's as if they're doing everything for you. As in finding the right bite point to transfer the torque. And at a certain point they do come together, and the torque makes its way to the transmission. It's pretty awesome. So when I release the clutch, it feels like the oil contained between the discs, even though it is of a special type, but the car doesn't move until it's pushed out. I mean, it does begin to set off, but very slowly. So the oil creates some pretension? Yeah, huh, and that effect is pretty much always there. You would have heard during the gear changes because of the synchros and what have you, um... Point is, the input shaft is always turning. But setting off is like, Artyom, you can't drive stick, why don't you try this out? Put it into second and just go. Go right ahead. We're letting a guy who can't drive stick have a go. Come on now, and, uh... Oh, holy cow. The guy does not know how to drive a manual, but he set off in second. And quite comfortably. In first gear, it is super smooth to set off, it is just terrific. Sup, Yanks? <laughs> if I may have your attention... Oh yeah, you might want to make one of these for that thing. Come take a look at this. What have you cooked up this time? We've come up with... well, this was invented long before us. We just adapted it. See that? Look at it with a flashlight. That is not a gearbox mod. What is that you got there? Okay, I see it now. Nope. You do see it, right? I see a metal can. Looks like you moved the clutch. And what did we do that for? There's oil in the clutch. Like a torque converter? Uh, yeah, sort of. Except that's not a torque converter, but rather... No, it's a wet clutch. Like the kind you'd find in a motorcycle. So it's a lotto with a slush box? No, that'd be our next project. We're still exploring the concept. Pedal travel is minuscule, can somebody get the door? Oh, it sets off right away. It is hard to catch the bite point. It really takes some getting used to, I have to say. So check this out, guys. You are constantly working the pedals, the gas, brake, clutch. And it sometimes happens that a regular clutch starts to burn. But in this case, everything just works very well. Okay, guys, so this worked out rather well. And though there are a few flaws, the thing is imbalanced, but this is about how a wet clutch is supposed to behave, so... Even though the success rate isn't necessarily 107%, it's still a good 100. And that's it for this video, you saw it all for yourselves. Don't be afraid to try this. And that's all I got for you, catch you guys later.